Hello and welcome to my next V-Ray for Maya video. This one is going to cover general V-Ray workflow and uh, render elements and how they can help you in composite. Now there's two general uh, methodologies for uh, rendering and compositing uh, a scene. Uh, I'll show you with this simple scene which I'm sure is not going to win any lighting awards. Um, you can see what the render, render is here. This is sort of where we're working toward. Two uh, methodologies where one, you would uh, render a beauty pass and try to get um, in camera as close as you can to your final image and then render out a few render elements as uh, uh, tools to modify your image in comp. The other is a more pipeline orient large pipeline oriented, um, in some ways academic method is uh, to break out all of your render elements, your diffuse pass, your specular pass, your GI, your reflections, all of these things then get mathematically combined in composite resulting in a lot of passes to come out with a single image. The benefit of this is so that you can have extreme control in composite which is much faster than having to re-render your image again and that's great and hopefully it, when you're in a large pipeline and a large facility you have tools to help you uh, navigate all this easily in uh, us in an individual's case I think a better workflow is where we're gonna go is beauty plus modification elements to tweak your final so that's where we're gonna go here so let's take a, a very basic quick look at our scene we have a couple of uh, martini glasses some mixed nuts a, uh, a lime uh, peel around here and some cherries in uh, in the drink um, you can see the basic lighting setup. We have a dome light that I'm using with an HDRI, so we have an environment, and one big light panel over here. Lighting is very simple. Like I said, it's it's uh, nothing spectacular here. I have basic materials applied to all the uh, all the objects. So let's take a look at some of these materials. We have um, our glass material. Um, I was playing around with dispersion, but we're not going to cover that right now so let's turn uh, dispersion off. The, um, the glass material is very very straightforward. Glass no diffuse. It has uh, Fresnel and uh, our reflection color is all the way up and amount is all the way up and our refraction is all the way up or totally refractive and our IOR is 1.6. Another thing we should mention is that effect shadows on glass should be on so that uh, light can transfer through the glass and, and shadow properly. Likewise for our gin, our gin is almost identical except with a slightly different um, IOR. So everything's the same, Fresnel, um, and the refraction IOR here is 1.3. And again you should turn on effect shadows and uh, we'll cover the there's also the color only color alpha and all channels we'll cover that in the uh, render elements bit coming up in a, in a sec the rest of these materials there's no textures applied they're, they're just pure materials so we're not going to see a whole lot of detail in this image so that's the basics of the scene now let's take a look at the uh, render globals for the scene we have um, just so you know it's the same that we've gone over before neater horse settings um, or otherwise known as the universal V-Ray settings so uh, I highly advise you to create a preset for those settings you'll see I have one here called linear workflow V-Ray frame buffer or VFB and that makes sure to toggle on the V-Ray frame buffer down here and uh, once again adaptive DMC the lower the threshold number the finer quality your image and the higher the threshold number the uh, grainier um, your image. Um, I often switch this to uh, Gaussian though. So now that we're familiar with the scene let's uh, go over what I mean by workflow. Workflow is... Uh, uh, I, I don't mean to, to go over how the scene is built in detail it's more about how um, once we've set up lighting and we're satisfied with the essential render of the scene how do we set up the render so that it outputs some additional information so that compositing uh, has the most flexibility 
and uh, to do that we're going to use render elements so uh, under the render globals you'll see a render elements tab we will uh, create a number of these since we're dealing with a reflective and refractive scene I might as well create uh, a reflection and refraction pass uh, specular um, diffuse and most of these you don't always use every one of these passes they're just handy every once in a while you might end up using one and uh, we'll create a z-depth and a normals pass and then the most important pass is a multi mat now you'll notice the available render elements are over here on the left I'm just double clicking one to add it to my scene um, so the multi mats are a way to assign uh, RG and B channels to uh, separate objects or materials in your scene because uh, we'll be doing material IDs we'll do it based on materials so let's go over to the hypershade now I've just lassoed everything in my scene and uh, graphed it here in the hypershade and then made sure that it was showing all my shading groups so let's take a look at um, and you'll see the shading groups are visible for a reason because we actually apply the V-Ray uh, material IDs to the shading groups so we'll double click the uh, one of the shading groups this is the V-Ray Gin material and uh, under the make sure you have the V-Ray shading group tab selected and under attributes you'll see uh, a V-Ray menu and you can apply a V-Ray material ID under material ID we'll assign this one one so that'll be our first material ID now I've already gone ahead and applied material IDs to uh, to all these other shading groups and you'll see each one of them is different so just be careful to apply different material IDs to each shading group so we've got a number of materials here I think about 11 or so so it's gonna require a few multi mat passes now each multi mat pass has an R G and B separated channel so uh, we'll probably will need uh, four multi mats so the first multi mat I created we can name that I usually just abbreviate multi mat a and we'll give this one two and three and make sure to toggle on use material IDs so the first three material IDs will go into this pass we'll create another multi mat name this multi mat B give this one channels four five and six and again use material ID and we'll just keep doing this yes I have quite a few materials in this scene so there will be a, a lot of extra mats but you'll be able to control each one of the materials separately in composite so now that we have all these uh, render elements let's do a quick render and uh, see what we get alright so I just finished a quick render um, a kind of low quality which is why it's uh, noisy but good enough for us to see what's what's going on here so since we use the V-Ray frame buffer we have this drop down menu to see all of our passes so let's toggle through them we'll see uh, the reflection pass uh, refraction pass so anything that's refracting through the glass we'll see that um, various specular highlights from uh, Fong or Blin shading we'll see our diffuse pass so um, these are just the, the raw diffuse colors um, Z-depth doesn't make a lot of sense with refractive objects so we should probably not have added that I'm already doing depth of field in camera as it is and uh, Z-depth won't handle refractive objects anyway so uh, let's ignore that we'll go to the normals pass this can be useful for doing relighting in uh, in post not something that we necessarily have to export now here's the uh, first multi mat and this is kind of important if you remember we've applied a uh, mat multi mat number one to the gin and because the first channel in RGB is red our gin under multi mat a should be red and you see a mix of colors here 
that uh, that actually is a mix of the green and the red blending through each other through this refractive property. However, this is actually accurate, and we'll see that by turning off some channels here. We'll turn off the blue channel and the green channel, and if you see only the red channel, that is an isolation of our gin, quite accurately. And likewise, if we turn off the red, we'll see just our um, green channel, which is actually our ground surface, and, uh, and our blue, which was not really confusing. There it is. It's a separate object. Um, jump through our other channels, and you can see something very interesting here. Our uh, uh, various detail objects, the cherries, the lime, are all of their mats are also refracting through here quite accurately, so their mats will line up uh, flawlessly in comp. Very cool. Now how is that done? Normally when we render out multi-mats, uh, you wouldn't even be able to see through the glass. The glass would be a solid green and we wouldn't see any of this information. Um, this is done through the, a material setting that I mentioned earlier. So let's open up that hypershade and take a look at that gin again. We open up that in the attribute editor and scroll down. Remember effect shadows, that's for lighting. But this effect channels function is uh, will affect all channels and all render elements. If you select it, uh, set it to all channels, then the render elements and uh, material IDs will all be refracted properly. If you do not set this, if you have it set to color only, then our multi mats will not work. So that's the importance of that setting. So let's quick toggle through the rest of our uh, render elements. We've got uh, just two more render. You can even see the the fact that these um, almonds, nuts, and stuff are, are refracting in the glass and reflecting in the glass, we actually get some of those details in the uh, render pass or render element uh, for multi-mats, which is a beautiful thing. And the last one, of course, is, is the glass and what's left in our scene. So now we've looked at how to apply material IDs to uh, materials in your scene and uh, how to uh, set up the render elements for that scene and we've gone through them so let's take a quick look a uh, very brief look at how these uh, interact with each other in comp so that you sort of understand why this is happening or why we're doing this so in this comp we've got our render and I piped in um, two of the multi mat passes so that we can have some color con correct control over uh, isolated elements so um, let's take a look at this color correct. Now the uh, it's being piped through right here is the red channel. So we'll let's color correct the red channel, which would be the gin. And you can see just using the color wheel, we can totally isolate um, just the gin and color correct only that. And likewise. Uh, for this pass, I've uh, isolated the green channel here, which would be the lime, and say I don't like the uh, the lime feels a little dull and unsaturated. So uh, let's go to that color correct. We can tint that a color, increase saturation, change gamma, lower gamma, so that it's uh, much much darker green. And uh, or if we didn't like that or if we wanted to change that and, and adjust the cherries switch over to the uh, red channel yeah I believe it's the red channel and now our color corrects are applied to just the cherries so we can change hue and saturation of those and they all work perfectly through refraction now that's, uh, that's as far as I'm going to take you in composite because this isn't a visit video about compositing really more uh, attuned to getting these sorts of passes out of uh, V-Ray and I was just showing you around. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, I'll have a new video up soon as well. Take care.